All right, with just about 10 more days to go, Google will finally be unveiling the new Pixel phones, which bizarrely, even though I'm an Apple sheep and I've got my new iPhone and I'm loving it and I'm loving my Apple Watch Series 4 and I think this is the best combo you can buy, I'm actually kind of interested in what happens at this keynote because between Google asking for weird clips from YouTubers, fake marketing, real marketing, intentionally leaking hardware out into the market to throw people off, I'm actually just excited to find out what was real and what wasn't real. So today we'll be weighing the best case scenario and the worst case scenario for the October 9th Google Pixel event. So I want to start off on a good note. So I want to talk about the best case scenario. What could actually get me excited for the Pixel line, make me think we could have something interesting. And that is the very, very plausible Pixel Ultra being real. So one size bezel all the way around the phone. They're somehow able to fit their front facing cameras, maybe some face unlock technology into that side bezel while still remaining to squeeze their front facing speakers on the front with a gorgeous uniform bezel all the way around a little bit thicker than usual, but it results in you not having to put up with a notch and not having a chin either. Not saying this theory is completely going to happen, 100% it is going to happen, but I would like to keep it as a possibility so that we can remain a little bit hopeful and this Pixel Ultra could ship with a Snapdragon 845 or perhaps Google could start working on their own in-house chips, which as we've seen when the hardware company designs the CPU themselves, like with Apple's A series of chips, you typically get much, much better results. I think Google is a company with a lot of resources. If they wanted to separate the Pixel line a little bit more from the rest of the Android competition, that would be a wonderful way to do that via hardware. I still don't even imagine a Pixel Ultra having a dual camera, but with the fans of Google's processing of how they handle pictures on the front facing camera and rear facing camera, with those bokeh effects and the HDR settings, I'm sure that the people who love the Pixel 2 camera are still going to love the Pixel 3 camera without adding a dual or triple lens setup. Even though the Exomark thinks that that might help a little bit, Google is going to put their foot down this time and say, no, single camera, that's all you need. Screw ultra wide, screw telephoto. It's all about that bokeh, which hopefully this year they're able to get a live view so you can actually see what the portrait photo looks like before you take it. Because right now you just kind of have to activate portrait mode and then hope that it looks good when it's done. And usually it does because the Pixel phones are really good at using AI to mask out their backgrounds. But still, the fact that you can't see it as you're taking it is an advantage both galaxies and iPhones have. I believe like a dream like price point could be around $900 for a Pixel Ultra. It would definitely be more expensive expensive than before, but my running theme with best case scenario this year is Google acknowledges that because they're competing with a lot of other Android phones, they need to be more competitive with their pricing. And that means being more obtainable by more and more people. See right now, the fact that they're still selling a Pixel 2 XL for $850 alongside phones like the Galaxy S9 for the past six months, I think that's a little embarrassing with all of the features that are packed into Galaxy phones that are even cheaper between dual camera, wireless charging, keeping the headphone jack for those who care about it while still running Android. There's only a few things Samsung does that you have to put up with in order for that phone to be overall a much more feature packed device compared to the Pixel phones, which you really gotta love that camera and stock Android because if you're not a major fan of that, there's not a whole lot on the Pixel line right now to be excited about, especially for that price point And especially when it comes to that software exclusivity because Android is pretty accessible for every other third party manufacturer out there. That's why I think it's okay that Apple prices their iPhones a little bit higher because you can't get iOS anywhere else. With Android, you can. So you have to get the argument of it's a it's a special version of Android, stock Android, which is totally different than other versions of Android, even though you can customize it to whatever you like. But regardless, lower prices, I think, would be best case scenario for the entire Pixel lineup this year. So we have Pixel Ultra, then we have the regular Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL. These, I think, while a lot of us like to make fun of them, they look ugly. If Google adds in the software a way to turn off the notch so you don't have to embrace it and then you just have widgets up there that are surrounded by pixels that are completely off and you're not forced to adapt to the notch I think a lot more people would be okay with it especially the regular size pixel 3 which I think if Google is smart since this phone would be incredibly average compared to the rest of the Android market right now the pixel 3 is going to be competing with the one plus 6t the regular one plus 6 and the galaxy s9 lineup and the note 9 I think it would make sense that Google makes these really premium phones a lot more obtainable for 
for countries like India, China by making them lower price so that import tariffs don't hurt them that bad. Or of course, they just manufacture them in those countries so they're more obtainable. So regular Pixel 3, I believe, should start at $500, not $650 and have giant bezels. I think it's funny how Google originally said, we don't believe that there should be exclusives depending on what size phone you buy. And then with the Pixel 2 XL, they made it look much, much better than the regular Pixel 2, which had giant forehead and chin, just so you could have those front facing speakers, which they honestly didn't need. But now it looks like the regular size Pixel 3 adopts that screen to body ratio that the Pixel 2 XL had, which I think was far more popular because it looked somewhat decent. It was a little bit better. Still not anywhere near the bezel-less design of what Apple has reached with the iPhone 10s and 10s Max or what Samsung has achieved with the Galaxy S9 or Note 9, but maybe Google could orient themselves as the Android phone that just works and is reliable. And I think selling the Pixel 3 at a lower price point could be a great way to market themselves to be more obtainable. That way, the Pixel lineup is a bit more in the field of the OnePlus phones and not so much the Galaxies and the iPhones. Based on some packaging leaks, I'm also really hoping that this is the year Google starts including headphones with the purchase. As we've seen with some leaks, we've got Pixel Bud looking headphones that use the USB-C port that they include with the phone now. That could be interesting. I definitely heard a lot of complaints about the design of the Pixel Buds and that adjustable cord not really working for most people, but that's still better than nothing. I just thought it was ridiculous that Pixel phones were so expensive and they didn't come included with headphones when that has been such a standard thing for smartphones for so long. Google should at least be able to do that if they're going to price themselves at that caliber. So hopefully this year they change that. Based on the leaks, we're definitely seeing a lot of glass back. So I assume Google will finally be adopting to the wireless charging game. But I'm also hoping that with the 3XL's new cameras on the front and the design for the regular Pixel 3 that we've been seeing that they've adapted some type of face unlock technology because when you put the fingerprint reader on the back, but then you tell people that wireless charging works, it's a little counterintuitive because you have to pick up the charger to unlock the phone and then put it back down. So it would make more sense that they adopt to face unlock technology of some sort. It doesn't have to be exactly like Face ID, just maybe something more like OnePlus has done with Face Unlock, which is really fast and reliable. So maybe they could move more in that direction. Now moving on to the worst case scenario. In other words, the scenario I think is more likely that I really would not be looking forward to because for those of you who don't know, I agreed to a deal with For the Love of Tech, a different tech channel out there on YouTube who said that if I use the Pixel 3 XL or the Ultra, whatever the nicest Pixel phone that came out this year is, if I use it as my daily driver for a month, I get to keep it and come on his channel to talk about my experience with it. And I agreed. So whatever the nicest Pixel that comes out in 10 days is, that is going to be my phone for a while. And I'm really going to miss this guy. <laughs> but worst case scenario, I think is the possibility that there is no Pixel Ultra. The leaks are absolutely true. They were not intentional. They were not fake. Both the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL are the only phones we'd be getting. Google tells everyone to totally embrace this big fat notch. There's not a way to turn it off because, hey, iPhones don't have a way to turn it off. Why should we? We're just trying to be the Google version of an iPhone. They don't change the prices, so they match the exact same prices of the 2 and the 2XL right now, which is $850 for that larger size. And honestly, when you look at that 3XL leak, the chin isn't even that small. You know, Samsung's been trying to shrink their chin a little bit. Overall, the Android community has been like trying to get rid of that. Apple's been able to get rid of it because they're okay with charging so much to get rid of it, or they're okay with biting the bullet and making 828p displays because they know most people don't care. And then they're able to get one size bezel all the way around with the iPhone 10R. But the rest of the Android community, since they're so fixated on 1080p and keeping the price lower than an iPhone, they're getting rid of as much as the chin as they can. But with the Pixel 2 and now the Pixel 3 XL design, it doesn't seem like they're trying very much. Turns out that the viral marketing campaign didn't actually work out. The Pixel Ultra we kept hearing about was a partnership they were hoping to do with Xiaomi, but never actually went into effect. They couldn't get their design teams to cooperate and they couldn't settle on a device that they think was adequately priced and ready for the consumer market. So it turns out Pixel Ultra had to be flat out canceled. Like some say just happened last year. There was supposed to be a third phone that came out and it actually didn't. That by far would be a hilarious keynote because everyone would be anticipating all of this hype, all of this, what's Google doing? Why are they bamboozling us? Why are they attempting this? And then it comes out and it's like, oh, all of that was for nothing. Yeah, they were just, they were actually that bad. That would be a really worst case scenario to have a $850 phone with a big notch coming out at the end of 2018, just now getting a Snapdragon 845, just now getting Qi charging and still got that one camera on the back, which I'm sure DxO Mark will say is great, even though it's gonna be severely lacking a lot of features that much, much cheaper iPhones can do between video and pictures. But you know, they're gonna send it out to a ton of YouTubers who are gonna love 
love it anyway. So what are they worried about? I'm hoping for scenario one where everything goes well because I gotta use this thing for a good month. So let me know what you guys think is going to happen or is it going to be a mixture of what I talked about today? All that good stuff, let me know in the comments below. This is your Apple Shapiro. I'll see you in the next one.